Have you ever been stranded in the cold without fuel and heat in your car or van? Not one of the most pleasant experiences, I can guarantee you that. How you doing guys? So we are back. Van life, but car life, van life, car life, regular life. There is always a slight chance that you might get stranded in the middle of nowhere. And how are you going to survive freezing cold temperatures? Stranded in 10 degree weather without heat. Does that sound appealing? I doubt it. The other day we had a snowstorm. It wasn't a big one, one to three inches, something like that. And before I left for work, I cleaned off my van from the snow, or at least the windshield area. And I expected nothing else to come out of that. But when I came home finally at four in the morning, it turned out that the rain from the day and evening had turned into a solid sheet of ice on my windshield. I have a scraper, not a big deal. So I get into my van, start the engine just to warm it up a little bit, look for my scraper. Got it. I start scraping. Oh, it makes such a screeching loud noise at four in the morning. I'm parked in a residential area. I really don't want to wake up the neighbors. It's a fairly good spot and I don't want to piss off the people around me. So I skip the idea of scraping keeping the noise low, get back into the van and wait and look at the fuel gauge and I realize that the low fuel light is going to come on at any moment, like literally. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't run out of fuel because I need the heat of the van to pre-melt the ice on the windshield. So it's easy to scrape off. So instead of it's gonna be like a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So I really couldn't run out of fuel and I couldn't drive because I couldn't see out the window. So I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there five minutes, 10 minutes and I'm like, oh boy, this is, this is not gonna end up good. The nearest gas station is two and a half miles away. I was like, I need to get to that gas station ASAP. So, give a little bit more time, roughly 15 minutes or so, the van had finally uh, warmed up a tiny little bit and started to melt the ice. Good, light is still not on yet. Excellent, but I'm praying. Eventually I get out, wipe off the, uh, the ice that's on the windshield. I did it in two steps. You know, first on the lower part, I was able to clean some off, uh, then waited for another five minutes and then, you know, do a little bit more on the upper part until I was able to safely drive. And uh, I headed straight for that gas station. Arriving at the gas station, I swiped my card at the pump and tried to pump gas. No gas coming out. I'm like, really? Pump broken, turn off, it says begin fueling, accepted my credit card. It doesn't work. I thought maybe it's me, maybe it's whatever, my van, I've got no idea, right? So eventually I go to the gas station attendant and uh, say like, hey, uh, the pump doesn't pump gas. Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with it. She says like, I don't know, try a different one. I'm like, okay. So I drive around, get to the next pump, you know? Then he comes out, he says to me, I was like, oh yeah, none of them accepts credit card. You gotta pay inside. I was like, okay, so I'm gonna go. Uh, they don't even let you come in. They just have a window, right? It's freezing. It's 10 degrees outside. And there's a light breeze, which makes it even colder. So I give them the card, pay for it, say 100 bucks. Uh, then I go back to the pump and this one. Yes, it works. And I'm pumping gas. And it's cold and I am cold. And it's about 20, 28 gallons what my van takes. Uh, so I ended paying up like 80 something dollars uh, 
but it took me quite some time to pump that gas and I was cold. But I was relieved that I had fuel so that the van could at least run and heat up a tiny little bit. But while I'm going through this entire process, first trying to defrost my windshield and then the troubles with the gas pump, I was considering my options. I was considering my options of what I'm gonna do if I can't get any heat in or if I cannot move my van. And the simple answer is, generally people fall into two types of categories. The category one is you're not prepared. And category two is you are prepared, but perhaps at different levels. So if you're not prepared, that essentially would represent me when I'm at work. My car works, I'm in the city, I'm never far from anything, and all of that is meaningless. Because when you have no heat and you're not prepared, you're gonna be miserable real fast. I'm wearing t-shirt, sweater, and shorts. That is my general attire, right? Not particularly helpful in cold weather. If you are prepared on the low end, just for a regular being stranded in a car going from A to B, uh, at least you wearing warm winter clothing, long pants, maybe long johns underneath, warm socks, winter shoes, uh, proper winter jacket, scarf, uh, gloves, hat, right? All of those should be part of your attire or at least they should be inside of your vehicle. Many times they're not. But I'm living in my van. So my van is my home. Living in your vehicle can present its own challenges in cold weather. I do not have a heater inside of my van or at least not a dedicated heater. I can run the engine, but you don't want to do that for too long. It's a very poor way of using fuel, but there is a small range of acceptable uh, engine running in order to, to stay warm. Now, for me to get from where I park my van during the day and where I park my van at night when I sleep, it's two different locations. So between starting the van, letting it warm up a little bit, driving and then letting it run a little bit extra, let's say it's 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most. That will warm up the cab area of the van and it will actually warm up the cargo area of the van as well, at least to a certain degree. I am happy with the van being in the mid 40s, 45 to 50 degrees. I'm absolutely happy. It allows me to get into the back and get myself into bed in relative comfort. But what does getting into bed actually mean? Because if you're stranded, if you're traveling, you might find yourself stranded for a longer period of time. There have been historical snowstorms where people were stranded for several days. Can you survive that without heat? And the quick and easy answer to that is, it depends. If you're prepared, the answer is yes. If you're not prepared, the answer is probably no. Now, my van, I've noticed, cools off at a rate of 10 degrees per hour. So if the temperature in the van is 50 degrees when I get into bed, or when I turn the engine off, then the temperature an hour later is only 40 degrees. And an hour later, it's only 34 degrees to 30 degrees. So it only takes two hours to get to a level of being cold and probably three hours for you to be quite uncomfortable without doing anything extra. So what are your solutions? Generally, during the summertime, I am using one blanket for sleeping. That blanket actually serves me quite well all the way down to, let's say, 40 degrees. It still makes me nice and cozy. But the moment it becomes freezing at 34 degrees and colder, that one blanket ain't doing the job. So we need more heat. 
And while an outside heat source is a wonderful thing and a kind of a luxury, even though it becomes a common luxury, it also turns out if you are under a warm set of covers, you do not need external heat. Your body creates all of the heat that you need to survive, not just for a day or for a night, but for many days. Your body is the heat source. The only thing your body cannot do is heat the air around you. You're not generating enough heat for that. But under a good set of covers, you don't have a problem in the cold. None whatsoever. So what is my current solution? Well, please excuse the mess behind me. I am the messy child in the family of van lifers. I'm not a good example for being organized. Okay, so this thing here, this is a sleeping bag. I know you can't see it very well, but it is a sleeping bag, has a long zipper. It's a square or rectangular uh, sleeping bag. It's not one of those mummy bags. I'm a big guy, so I need extra space. This sleeping bag is rated for zero degrees. Now, zero degrees Fahrenheit, that is. Now, zero degrees is not actually where you will be comfortable in this sleeping bag. The rating kind of like degrades. It's like 30 degrees, very comfortable. 20 degrees, still comfortable, but it's getting a little cooler. Uh, 10 degrees, uh, you're definitely starting to feel some cold. And then down to zero degrees, it's like, yeah, you, you might do this for a night, but not more than that. Right? Uh, that's kind of like how the rating degrades. But otherwise, it's a sleeping bag rated for zero degrees, which is considerably better than a sleeping bag rated for 35 degrees. But this sleeping bag alone, not enough. Not to be comfortable, sustainably comfortable for a long period of time. So I'm having a second blanket. This is the blanket. It's a reversible blanket, gray on one side, black on the other side. This is the blanket that I use year round. I'm using this to lay it over the sleeping bag. So I'm having two layers, right? Two layers. That makes it considerably warmer. It also allows me to better snuggle in under my blankets. And the, the blanket is bigger than the sleeping bag because it is actually a king size blanket. I'm a tall guy, I'm 6'4", uh, I have wide shoulders, I'm fat, you know, you know the story. Right? So when I had this experience with, with my little ice storm and running out of fuel, I also realized because it was cold in the teens, that this wasn't enough. If the temperature dropped any lower, this was not enough heat retention. So the very next day, I went to Walmart and I got this blanket, this one. This is like a flannel type of blanket, All right? This is the blue side is the outside and then the white side is a nice fluffy side that's the inside. Um, so I'm using this, also king size, right? To lay again over the other two blankets, the sleeping bag and the blanket. So now I'm having three layers. I'm having one layer, two layers, and three layers. Oops. One layer, bottom, sleeping bag, first blanket, and second blanket. So these are my three layers for sleeping. And with those, as it turns out, mm, it's super comfy. Mm. But sleeping bags and blankets alone are not actually doing the job. You need a little bit extra. 
when you're cold or when it's cold outside or inside you will have a problem that your extremities your hands and feet your arms and legs are gonna be cold first so you definitely want to make sure your hands stay within your sleeping bag and blankets and so do your legs but your legs are long far way away so you really should be wearing nice warm wool socks I don't actually have any around right now that's why my feet were cold the first night that's why I went for that second blanket I mean third blanket because it wasn't enough so nice set of wool, wool socks definitely helps keeps your feet warm it's super important what i've done in the past when i had a set of socks like that around um, i would just put those socks uh, right over my regular socks so i have essentially two layers of socks on my feet and that works well mm. but your feet and your hands are not the only thing that gets cold real fast this noggin here right on top right on top of your neck that is super important apparently without that you ain't going anywhere. So what you want to do is protect your head as well. And that is where one of these comes in. It's a ski mask. Beauty. This ski mask keeps your entire head warm and it's absolutely marvelous it uh, it really helps but you don't want to do just a ski mask uh, as you can see I'm using this ski mask also to control my beard which is kind of like nice but you also want to wear a good sweater a sweater with a hoodie on it because this way you can also put your hoodie over yourself this gives you the added advantage that the hoodie actually covers your back and neck area as well. That keeps you warmer. If you had a scarf, you can still wear a scarf either underneath or on top. But this is a double whammy head protection. Super important if you're uh, sleeping in freezing cold temperatures. You most likely will also want a set of good pillows around you, larger pillows. Uh, the one main pillow obviously is the one where you sleep on with your head. Um, and you really want your head to sink into the pillow. Because if your head sinks into the pillow, it is protected from essentially three sides. I even like, and I had this in the past when I uh, lived in a different vehicle many years back, where I had the entire back side of my bed covered in large pillows. So when I was sleeping, and I'm a side sleeper, my back was essentially wrapped up in my blankets and then leaning against those pillows, which increased the insulation factor and kept me super warm. As a matter of fact, there was one night, I remember this, this was crazy. First, it was so cold that night, um, I had a 12 pack of uh, Diet Coke cans uh, sitting next to my bed and uh, one or two of those cans just exploded. It was, everything was frozen. But that night when I woke up finally in the morning, I woke up with icicles on my beard just from breathing. It was that cold. I think it was one of those nights where it was actually minus 10 degrees. But I had my sleeping bag, I had my blanket, I had my pillows, I had my headscarf, my socks, the whole nine yards, and I was so cozy warm. It was kind of weird waking up with icicles on my beard because I was so cozy warm. So if you are stranded, you are, it's a question of, are you out of luck or are you prepared? If you are prepared, you might have at least a basic sleeping bag in your vehicle. You might have a sleeping bag and a blanket in your vehicle. Anything that will keep you warm. 
some people go for uh, electric blankets. They are kind of nice, but they're also not nice. Because the moment the electric blanket is turned off, let's say you run out of power, you get cold real fast because they are not very warm blankets. They're not designed to keep you warm by themselves. They are designed to keep you warm because there's a heating element inside. Okay, And because you had outside heat, you're not even used to the cold weather. I'm constantly out in the cold. I'm, I'm comfortable in 45 degree weather. Most people will be freezing their butt off in 45 degree weather. But the reason I'm comfortable is because I'm constantly exposed to cold. And that is kind of like where I'm comfortable at these days. Even 30 degrees, 35 degrees, it's still good. So a electric blanket can be a solution short term, but it will use up electricity. And where is that electricity coming from in your vehicle? Most likely from the battery. Are you gonna run down the battery so you can't start the engine anymore? Yeah, that's gonna be a risk you're taking, right? So you're actually 10 times better off having a proper blanket or two or three than a single heated blanket. A heated blanket may feel nice when you're coming in from the outside and you're really cold uh, because it feels like it's giving you additional heat. And it does. But your body generates all of the heat that it needs. And if you're cozily cuddled up in your blankets, <sighs> that's why I don't want to get out of bed because it's so comfy. Uh, yeah, so if you live in an area where it gets cold at night, even if you don't think you're going far enough to be stranded, or even if you think your car is in good shape and it's not going to break down, anything can happen. Have a nice warm blanket and or a sleeping bag in your vehicle. Have an extra pair of warm socks. Have a ski mask, have gloves, head, and gloves, head, um, and a scarf around. Have a sweater, hoodie for additional protection. Have a warm jacket. All right. It's a amazingly simple setup to keep you safe. Right. You might be thinking, oh, I'm just going from work home. It's only a 20 minute drive, not a big deal. And then there's something along the way, road conditions preventing you from going further and you have to stop. And then something breaks and now you're stranded. And while you think you're so close to home, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you just wait out the storm and then you keep on going and then the, the situation just keeps on deteriorating and you won't be able to go and you will have to make a decision. Are you gonna stay put or are you gonna leave? Generally speaking, people that are stranded in their vehicles in the winter are better off staying with their vehicle never leave your vehicle because you if you are in whiteout conditions in a snow blizzard the moment you slip and fall covered in white no one is gonna see you no one's gonna find you you're gonna get cold so fast and disoriented so quickly you have no idea where you are and how you can find safety Stay with your vehicle is your best option at any given moment. And if you're halfway prepared, you have your warm clothing because it is winter and you have maybe a sleeping bag and a blanket and some other goodies, you can survive in your vehicle without heat for a long time. You have no problem with that. On that note, there's two additional things you need to do when you are in a vehicle stranded. If, and I hope you do, have something like water around. 
take one or two bottles of water with you into the sleeping bag. This way the water won't freeze and you have something to drink. It might even be warm. The other thing that you definitely want to have in your sleeping bag with you is your phone, your cell phone, fully charged. Don't play games or watch videos. Take a fully charged phone with you into your sleeping bag and go to sleep. Right? Don't run down the battery with nonsense. Because when you wake up, your engine may not start again. And you may not have the power to recharge your phone. So you want to preserve that. But you also want to protect your phone from the cold. Because the cold can be very detrimental to the phone's battery. So you want to take those two things, the water and the phone with you, into your sleeping bag. One last word about the vehicle. There's a lot of different uh, shapes and sizes of vehicles out there. And I can tell you that the best vehicle is the biggest vehicle. The worst vehicle is the smallest vehicle. Uh, number one reason for this is a larger vehicle, SUV type or even a van, probably handles better in the snow. You can get over snow and ice much easier than in a smaller car. But more importantly, especially when you are stranded and stuck, when you have a small car or vehicle, your only place to get comfortable might be your driver's seat or passenger seat, front passenger that is. But sleeping in a front seat is generally a very uncomfortable experience. You most likely to some degree cut off circulation to your legs, which is not good. You are completely stretched out, which means your body has a much better chance of evaporating the heat out of it. It is much more prone to the cold. And it is much harder to cozy up inside a sleeping bag and blanket. For the most part, you may lay it on top of you, but the entire underside is still going to be exposed. It's not an easy environment, the front seat, to get comfortable and to sleep in. Sometimes you get one of those tiny little girls, 4, 10, and uh, you know, 95 pounds or something. They can sleep almost anywhere. More power to them. Children, I guess, too. But for most of us, that's not really an, op really an option. So back in the days, the vehicle that I used to drive was a Toyota Highlander. And I had three rows of seats. The rear row, the rear wrist row, the third row, was always folded flat. I never used it. So it was essentially just trunk space. But when I folded over the second row, I had one large flat area. And it turned out, at a slight angle, I could fully stretch out back there. And I'm 6'4". So I can't sleep in there. And I did, I did sleep in that particular car for like five years. That was my first five years of being homeless. Until the beginning of the pandemic. So I did sleep in that for a long time. And I had a... Uh, what did I have in there? I had a yoga mat for a little bit of padding on the bottom. I had a blanket, I had a bed sheet. In the summer, I would use a bed sheet, and in the winter, I would use a blanket. And I had a sleeping bag just like this one. As a matter of fact, same model, but different bag. I don't know where it is right now, probably in storage someplace. So I had all those things, and I had a pillow. And well, because I was living in the car, I also had one duffel bag for all my clothing and stuff. And that was literally everything that I had. Nothing else. Now, in those days, winters where Malda was kind of lucky. So I never really needed a uh, third blanket. But sometimes when it was kind of a little on the frisky side, I had a remote start, so I would remote start the engine and it would only run for 15 minutes so I guess on the colder nights you know I would wake up and then start the engine maybe once or twice and then you know fall back asleep but that's not a that's not an ideal but there's larger vehicle 
allowed me to fully stretch out, to fully get comfortable with my sleeping bag and blankets. And I didn't, if I wanted to curl up inside of them, that was fine too, right? So I was very comfortable and uh, never had to worry about the, the cold on the outside. In a smaller vehicle, you don't necessarily have that option. It's not comfortable sleeping in a front seat. It's not healthy. There's a lot of vehicle dwellers out there who sleep in their front seat. And they say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's, yeah, give it a couple of years, months, years, and uh, your legs are gonna be bad. You, you're you not gonna be good. Uh, the front seat is not a good place to sleep in. In an emergency, you can do it for a night, maybe two. Personally, I rarely find a comfortable position in a front seat. Ain't happening for me. So if you have a larger vehicle or if you're planning on getting a new vehicle, new used is fine, right? Uh, consider your options. If you live in an area where it gets cold in the winter time, maybe you want a vehicle that's slightly bigger. It improves your driving ability. And if you get stranded, you have a chance of actually spreading out and getting comfortable and surviving a longer cold spell. And that, my friends, is my take on being stranded at 10 degrees without heat. You can do it. You can survive it. It is not even that difficult. People used to live in the cold without anything before. Just a couple of bare skins. So I hope you guys stay warm. Uh, stay safe. Uh, don't be one of those who gets caught unprepared. And be comfortable. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.